Um, now, what was the question asking us about? Um, it's asking you what activity, what are the activity and the fraction of nuclei have decayed after 59 years? 59 years. So is this going to be the exact answer? No. But it'll be approximate. Close. So you were, uh, when I asked you before to make a prediction, you said, uh, I think you were thinking of having this twice. Uh, well, we can see from the table now that's close to being right, but not exact. Okay. Well, actually, if it's a multiple choice problem, maybe you can still pick out the right choice here. You would want it, so you, you want a choice that's a little bit bigger than this or a little bit smaller? Uh, just a little bit smaller. Yeah, because after one more year, there'll be even fewer of the nuclei left, so even fewer decay. So we'd want something a little bit smaller than this. I think it's going to be 2.9. Nothing like that, perhaps. Well, we'll be confirming that as we go. All right, but this is the best we can do with the table, so there's not much point doing another row, because the next row is going to be too far in the future. The next row would be 58 plus 29, mm -hmm. right? Well, that, that's far more than 59. All right, so this is the best we can do with the table. Remember I said that the tables only give you the exact answer if the time period you're focusing on is a multiple of the half-life. Mm -hmm. Well, this time period is not an exact multiple of the half-life, so the table can only give us an approximate answer. This is still a good start to get a feel for this and to get a better feel for how this works. So notice that logically you should fill out this column first, then you fill out this column, um, okay. and then you fill out this column. Okay. Um, also, the question was asking us for the fraction that are remaining. Yeah. What In fraction of the nuclei, or what fraction have decayed? Okay. What fraction have decayed? So let's make another column here. for the fraction of the nuclei that are left. The fraction remaining. Zero. Well, wouldn't the fraction remaining originally be 100%? Yes. Right, originally all 100% or in the decimals one would be remaining. So then what fraction would be remaining in this cell? 0.5. Yeah, or 1 half. Um, I'll call it 1 half because they asked for the fraction. And then what fraction would be remaining in this cell? Um, it's going to be 1 half of 1 half. That's right. 25%. Uh, or 1 quarter. Or That's 1 half times 1 half, so which one is 1 quarter. quarter. And that's about all we need here. So what fraction will be remaining? Um, about one quarter. Um, but the question is not asking what fraction is remaining. It, it's asking uh, actually the what. What have fraction decayed, is gone? Have decayed. Yeah, the fraction decayed. Well, what fraction had decayed at time zero? Zero. Yeah, none had decayed because there hadn't been any time. What fraction had decayed in this cell? One half. And what fraction had decayed in this cell? Three-fourths. That's right. So is the true answer to this part of the problem going to be a little more than three-quarters, exactly three-quarters, or a little less than three-quarters? A little less. So this is too little time, right? We have to go one more year? Oh, no, there's going to be a little bit more. Than Notice how these numbers yeah. keep getting bigger. Over time, the fraction that's remaining gets a little smaller, smaller and smaller, so the fraction that's decayed gets bigger and bigger. Oh, Eventually, it's going to get close to 100%. So we're predicting that the true answer will be a little bit smaller than this and a little bit bigger than this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, that's the best we can do with the table. We can't get exact answers because this is not a multiple of the half-life. Notice how easy, though, it would have been easy, how easy it would have been on this problem to just do this column and think that the answer was one quarter instead of three quarters. So you have to pay very close attention to whether they're focusing on the fraction remaining or the fraction decayed. Um, so, but of course, these two things added up together, have to add up together to one. Okay. All right. So this is the most we can do with the table. So now we're going to have to go to our equations. We need to do this with these equations when you don't have a, a, a time that's an integer number, uh, a multiple of the half-lives. So um, we're trying to figure out this, the um, activity. So um, it, it's going to be the last uh, equation. This one here? Yeah. All right. So how would we write that down? Good. 
Geld. Because we can use the same form of the equation for n and for a, because we're proportional, as we discussed. But I think we need to first find the rate of the decay. That's right. And then we'll plug it in in the. Yes, I agree. Very good. Okay. Okay, um, so that's right. Now, what are you going to, uh, let's back up for a second. What are you going to plug in for T? Eventually, what are we going to plug in for T? 59 years. 59 years. Okay. Um, no, that, that's right. That's fine. Okay, so this is fine. You're doing good. So uh, let's get a number for this. It's um, 0 0.024. Point zero two, I'll call that point zero two three nine. We won't round off too much to avoid rounding error. Point zero two three nine. Good. Good. So now we will be able to find um, to plug this in um, actual. Yes. So it looks like you're trying to do a unit conversion. Yeah, because don't we need to put, because these are given in years, and the other is given, oh, it's given in years, not days. Let's talk about that. It's good that you were worried about that. So we do have two different types of units here. Some of the things are given in years, and some are given in seconds. But is that a problem? Well, who is interacting with each other, so to speak? We have to have multiply the k and the t. By the way, we haven't talked about this, but exponents should be unitless. Exponents should be unitless. Well, that's what's going to happen here, right? Because our k is in per years, and our time is in years. So I don't usually write down the units, but writing them down here sees that the units, shows that the units are consistent. They will cancel, and we'll get a unitless exponent, which is the way the math is supposed to work. It's true that this is in seconds, but that doesn't matter because this isn't interacting with these, with these just, numbers. I, mean, yeah. I don't know why. It's just I saw that it's 59 right. days. It's not years. Right. So that's why okay. I was like, trying to convert the 59 right. days in the years, because it just, I don't know. Yep, so yeah, so we do have to be careful about those units. But these units are working out well.